Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Only, Only murders, murders in the, in building. the building. Hey, y'all. Hey. Hi. Welcome to Sisters Who Watch. I'm Shelby. And I'm Laura. And we're Sisters Who Watch Everything, TV, movies, sports, concerts, and even murder mysteries in the same building, season after season. <laughs> over and over. We love, we love to watch, and we love talking about it even more. Today we're watching Only, Only murders, murders in the Building, in the building. season three. Woo! Okay, Shelby, give us the background. Highly anticipated yes. show. Hot yes. show. Yes. Only Murders in the Building is a comedy, drama, mystery, true crime thriller, big job and blunder on Hulu that premiered in 2021. It's a show created by Steve Martin and John Hoffman. And I'd say it like leans into the trend of like true crime, murder mystery, investigative podcast. Yes, podcasting. <laughs> And it's set in New York City, so it's a very, like, New yeah, York yeah. and, like, coastal show. I started watching it right away because I love myself a good comedy, dramedy. Really liked it and then told you to watch. Yeah, and I've been, I've really enjoyed it. Like you said, if you've all been listening to the pod, Shelby and I were from New York. We grew up in the New York City area. Mm-hmm. So we, I definitely love seeing the city and the culture. And, of course, this season, Broadway. So that was exciting. <laughs> um so yeah, it's just really cool. It's super funny. We love comedies. I'm oh, not the biggest drama girl. Yeah, you don't really so watch I, dramas. Not particularly, but we love comedies. So I really enjoyed the first and second season a lot. Already it was star-studded. I mean, Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. And there's been lots of guest stars. Cara yes. Delevingne, Tina Fey, Michael Nathan Rappaport. Lane, Jane Lynch. So many guest stars. And this season, Meryl Streep <laughs> joined the cast. Paul Rudd. <laughs> Paul Rudd. Meryl Streep joining Big the cast name. is like such a wild card. You're just like, oh, like, what okay. Shook. I see what you're doing now. Yes. <laughs> I honestly feel like whenever a show is able to get big names, clearly people like the show and yes. want to work with the creators, the actors. Because right, why would Meryl Streep, like a one of the biggest actors of our generation, who right is, I guess, what people would consider like one of the best female actors ever, and the oh, yeah. fact that she wants to be on Only Winners in the Building, like that says a lot. That's a lot. So huge names, and of course, Paul Rudd. Everyone likes Paul Rudd. Love He's him. one of the Ant-Man. biggest <laughs> actors. You know, he's that it guy, right? Okay, coming into this season, we have Paul Rudd. We have Meryl Streep on the cast. What else were you expecting? I mean, tell us a little bit more about the first and second seasons. The premise of each season is that there's a murder. <gasps> and what? Oh, it's called Only Murders in the Building for a Reason. <laughs> there's That's a it. murder that happens in the apartment building that the Steve Arcania. Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez all live in. And they are very intrigued by the murders and find themselves trying to figure out who is the murderer? So yes. season one, Tim Kono, who was a resident of the Arconia, turns out murdered. And then the three of them come together, create a podcast talking about the suspects and who they think murdered Tim. And then it turns out that the murderer is Jan, who just happens to be Steve Martin's Charles and Savage's <laughs> girlfriend <gasps> it was crazy crazy season one was really good season one was really good season two one of the arconia residents again bunny gets murdered bunny. she was Her- like a cranky old lady yeah she was a cranky old lady and had lived in the apartment building for years so a lot of people knew her and she had a lot of friends in the apartment. So that was like a big death people were shocked about. She ended up being murdered by a competing podcast host's assistant because the assistant was trying to 
basically like elevate her profile, be connected to another murder, right. find a way to like grow in her career. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, that was very, I mean, of course, all murder is unhinged, but her reasoning did not make any sense. Zero. <laughs> It was really good, and I think the way the show kept keeps you guessing, and right. it was unpredictable. And in both the first se- two seasons, you had no idea like who the murderer was. At least I didn't. So I think right. it was really clever. And there are red herrings. You think it's someone else, and then you find out they looked guilty but didn't do it. So it was fascinating. Definitely. So, and we were talking about season two. Bunny died, but then at the end of the season we see paul rudd who's a star of um martin short's play yes and oliver. on opening night oliver um opening of oliver's play paul rudd comes out the star of the show and he collapses on stage i that was a really good ending for the season it i remember thinking really like really good ending oh my gosh like, that was one so insane. who's paul rudd two not another murder that they're all involved in <laughs> Worst luck, this trio. I know. Poor Oliver, honestly. Mabel, Oliver, and Charles. Tough. I can't. And also, if you're watching, Shelby and I were wearing um, scarves and sweaters in honor of yes. Mabel. Because Mabel loves a chunky chunky sweater, a scarf, mm-hmm. a cardigan, She's all the things. always dressed for fall and winter in New York. Always. Yeah. Even if it's spring. We're channeling Mabel. <laughs> we're channeling Mabel. Okay. So we talked about season one season two our expectations are high both of both of, of those seasons were really good yes so coming into season three and we have this cliffhanger we're like oh my gosh paul rudd dies mm-hmm. like what happens okay so let's get into it a big theme of this season was love and relationships mm. it seems like everyone had a little mm-hmm. fling this season yes all three of our main characters mabel yes. charles and oliver were in relationships Ooh. Ooh. so first starting with mabel selena gomez's character last season she had a relationship with cara delavine's character which but, was strange which was strange but didn't work out because cara seemed, she was using her she was using right her. yeah yeah and mabel got offended of course and thus that didn't work out this new season mabel finds herself interested in a new character played by jesse williams his name is yes robert robert <laughs> very bizarre name that's Ooh. why i could barely say it robert robert who is writing these characters robert <laughs> and mabel you know, the names in this show are great they're robert and wild. mabel who interesting what? choice yeah robert is wild that's so unhinged <laughs> Was excited to see Jesse Williams, but his name threw me off guard. And also his character was weird. I didn't like him. He was him. weird. Yeah. I didn't like him on the show. He played a documentarian um, who was hired by Paul Rudd's character, Ben Gilroy, to document his experience being in a Broadway show for the first time. Mm-hmm. Because Paul Rudd plays a actor who's known for kind of like I don't want to say stupid stuff, but not the highest of quality. Not the highest of quality content. content but yeah. now is trying to have a more, more serious, prestigious, prestigious yeah. acting career by being in a play on Broadway. So hires Tobert to document it. Tobert and Mabel somehow get together. I don't really understand why they both are curious about how Ben Paul Rudd's character dies. So right. I guess the murder brings them together. And <laughs> as they're investigating, I guess there's chemistry. I didn't see it. I, but... I did not see the chemistry. Did anyone see the chemistry? I did not. Where and then they seemed it? really awkward together, right? Yeah, I didn't understand it. Nothing. Strange. No chemistry at all. Strange. Hey, yeah. So didn't love their relationship, but... No. It seemed like Mabel was also lonely, so maybe she like needed yeah. some companionship. Because this I mean, happened, you know, as her she's getting kicked out of her aunt's apartment, Charles and Oliver also finding love. It seemed like Mabel 
didn't have much going on. So she no. needed to solve the murder, needed to have another companion. Definitely. I agree. So for Charles and Joy, another bizarre relationship. Joy was Charles's makeup artist yes. on Brazos for like d- decades, apparently. <laughs> So then they reconnect and that happened last season when they reconnected yes. and mm-hmm. they're dating and Joy Charles accidentally proposes to her. Remember this, the the white room episode? Yeah. And he goes, you know, into this it's white like a room. trance. Exactly. And he asked Joy to marry him. I felt really bad for Joy. Poor thing. And this happens after joy kind of forces herself into moving in with him like it didn't seem like charles was that happy about no charles did not want to be moving her her stuff in like she had the weird fish tank like it seemed like joy really wanted with charles and charles could care less but somehow charles accidentally proposes and then has to awkwardly break it off because he realized yeah i don't want to be with her it was yeah yeah it was weird she had a lot of fish in the apartment um yeah poor joy charles like clearly he's just not that into you like just why recently watched that movie again on a plane (laughs) (laughs) i can't and then oliver and meryl streep loretta they have a relationship strange was happy for Oliver because in the other happy. seasons, yeah. Charles and Mabel were in relationships, but this was the first one where Oliver had right. some love. Finally. DLC. I know. Poor Oliver. He's kind of been through a lot in I the know. last few seasons. And this one he really you know, has. Whew, his play is in shambles because of Ben's death. He has to change it to a musical. He's having right. heart problems. Like Oliver was going through it this season. For sure. But the bright spot was his relationship with as you said Meryl Streep's character Loretta who's a struggling actress right she Mm -hmm. has been in the industry for a while and moved to New York to be a actress decades ago but never got her big break and this is her moment this is her big role yes and through it her and Oliver fall in love initially right maybe it was a red herring it was hard to know if we could trust loretta because she and ben didn't really get along and you were like is, did she kill ben what's happening yeah like she was acting kind of fishy we then find out it's for another reason but i was initially a little concerned about loretta's motives but then you're like no she just was had a lot going on being a little awkward but clearly she likes oliver and oliver really likes her so it was yeah. nice that they found each other yes they were happy and yeah it was good to see oliver in a good place right yes okay so another theme was motherhood um i mean of course death rattle (laughs) death rattle musical the whole thing is about babies you know and Mm -hmm. did the babies you know commit murder which is such a wild premise (laughs) like wow Yes, uh, wild premise, very fitting uh, for this show about murder. And I also think fitting given various suspects for Ben's murder were mothers protecting their children. That's it. First being Loretta and Dickie. Loretta, right, Meryl Streep's character, we find out in a pivotal episode, Sits Probe, which was my favorite episode this season. Yeah, for sure that she was actually Dickie, Ben's brother slash manager's biological mother. (gasps) (gasps) Cray cray. Shocker. Yeah, that was a definitely a plot twist I was not seeing. Because I think the episode before, Oliver is at her apartment and he finds this book with all these pictures of Ben. And you're like, Oh my gosh. Why why does she have this book? She killed is she obsessed ben. with him? Right? Like that was really weird. Why really did she have this book? Weird. And then the next episode you see her talking about how 
she had a baby and she had to give the baby up so that was a really good plot twist really that was unexpected twist. and you find out all those photos were not of ben but of dicky because right dicky's his manager and brother so he's always with ben yes and that blew my mind and when Loretta keeps hearing from Mabel, Charles, and Oliver that they think Dickie's the one who killed Ben, she gets nervous and she's trying to say, oh, it can't be Dickie. He wouldn't do that. And right. as the cops are there interrogating the cast about who killed Ben, she decides to take the fall and say she did it to protect Dickie because she's concerned Dickie killed him. Mothers protecting their children what's what's new if you've listened to this podcast constant theme woman constant. protecting everyone else especially no taking the, men. the fall <laughs> so that was a really powerful scene to me seeing yeah. her kind of reckon with the fact like oh i gave up this child to pursue my career it took a long time for me to kind of get to this place and seeing the kind of childhood he had that was tough at times being a Ben shadow and so it felt like this was a moment for her to finally like prioritize Dickie and protect him yes definitely and of course another mother-son duo Donna and Cliff the producers of Death Rattle they had a very bizarre relationship you could say they're always kissing yeah it's whenever like, I see <laughs> parents kiss their kids on the lips as adults it freaks me out it's it's a little strange I think that's a red flag is that a red flag today is there a red flag to kiss your adult child yeah maybe that's what we should have had as the red flag (laughs) sound sound off below yeah that that was strange that was definitely strange they're very close um and as we see just as um just as Loretta did for Dickie, Donna is like, I gotta protect my son. I gotta take the fall for the murder, right? And she was spoiler doing alert. everything. Right. Spoiler <laughs> spoiler alert. Cliff ends up being the one who, you know, killed Ben. And he says it was an accident. So his mom was like, okay, like, I'll take the fall for you. Like, I did it. The entire time she's trying to protect her son, right? She's like, This is his big show. Like, I need to make sure this is a success. And we see, this is a good segue to our favorite moments because when Paul Rudd first passed out on stage um, that we saw at the end of last season, that was so dramatic. And you're like, what just happened? We're like, oh my gosh, he's dead. He's in the hospital. We're like, this is the murder, right? But then he wakes up and you see, we see him later at the Arconia, which was so bizarre. But we see in the last episode, that Donna put rat poison on the cookie. Yeah. Like just a little bit because she was trying to protect the play and her son's success because Ben was apparently not great acting, did not do a great job in the play, according to um, a review by Maxine. Yeah. Maxine. So to circle up and like close the loop on motherhood. You have Donna and Loretta both going to extreme lengths to protect their sons. Yes. Donna first poisoning Ben to not have him perform an opening night to save her son from having a bad review on the first play he's producing. And then taking the fall for him when the son accidentally kills the star of the show wilds our favorite moments for me like you said laura the fact that paul rudd survives the poison but then dies again on the same night i can't you literally it faked me out i was like oh my gosh wow he's alive he must not be the one that we're solving the murder for this season right and then plot twist he is because he dies again murders in the building he couldn't have died on and on stage he has to die in in (laughs) miraconia there we go um so that was that was really good like i thought the first episode was really good and the last couple were like top notch like you said the sits probe episode finally because we've talked about this when the season first started in the middle 
you and I weren't, you know, as captivated, as enticed. It, it, it took a minute to ramp up. It was a little slow. Yes. The Sits Probe episode brought the drama, pace, and energy that I was looking for. It was almost like the climax of the season, yeah. but it felt a little too late for me because yeah. the rest of the season had been a bit slow. Yeah. And the episode was when we find out about Loretta being Dickie's mother, the our favorite police detective. Oh, yeah. Played by I needed Dabine more of her this season. Randolph yeah. comes in to interrogate everybody. And she has some fun moments. Charles and Mabel and Oliver all back together on the same side trying to find out who the murderer is. Oliver ends up having a heart attack at the end. Like there's a lot going on. I was like, finally, the drama I've been looking for. It just came a little about bit. time. It, it yeah. took it, the season definitely lagged in the middle. Finally, this is a good episode. But in between, I don't even remember what si- they did in six episodes. Like there wasn't a lot of movement in the storyline. It was just like oh. we're practicing for the musical. We're investigating the murder. There wasn't a lot happening in the middle. So I wish there was more going on. Um, And I'd say another favorite moment for me is just Oliver finally having a good Broadway show to produce. Yes. By turning Death Rattle into a, from a play to a musical because the Death Rattle play was getting, you know, bad reviews. People were a little concerned. So turning into a musical, still pushing through after Ben's death and finding a way to redeem his musical, I was excited for him, especially given we know his history. He doesn't have the best track record when it comes to Broadway. Like they've joked about it. Like he's had awful luck, people dying on stage or like plays being poorly reviewed. So I was happy that Oliver finally has a good show on his hands. Yes. Totally, totally agree. I I was happy for Oliver, and I also really liked uh Charles Charles's song with Jenna and I did the song. The Patter song, yes, that was good. That was definitely a highlight. When he of finally this got it, he finally got it, and everyone was like, "Is he gonna do it?" <laughs> Again, good episode. I know that was what definitely happens. the best episode. So I enjoyed Charles this season and his patter song. <laughs> okay, what were some of your least favorite moments? We talked about it. Tobert and Selena Gomez. Anytime Tobert and Mabel were together, honestly, like I kind of cringed. I was not here for it. Yikes. I I just don't know if he was needed. Right. It felt tough. like they just wanted another name. It felt like the other new cameos or new guest stars had more meat, more things to do. Yeah. Right? Meryl Streep, Paul Rudd. But Jesse Williams, it was kind of like, eh. Didn't need yeah, exactly. didn't need much. They just wanted a love interest for Mabel. But he just, I feel like he did not even need to be a part of the storyline. No. Like, honestly, you could have taken him out. Him out okay. Yeah, nothing, barely anything would have changed. He was not Yikes. needed. And I feel like Jesse Williams is a good actor. It, it felt like he was just there. It really did. Yeah. So that was unfortunate. Justice for, for Topper. <laughs> and we in the stalker, Ben Stalker in the beginning. We didn't see him after the first couple episodes, but he was really creepy. Yeah, and he kidnapped mabel and charles and like is about to kill them and it was just very was intense lot. and then everyone thinks he must have been the one to kill ben so he's falsely imprisoned and then is Too eventually obvious. released we don't know what happens i'm like hopefully he's not gonna go on a rampage again now that he's on the streets i know he might come back he might come back but uh he Another was released line. when we found yes. out uh he was not the killer i also didn't like we mentioned it briefly, the white room. Basically, Charles has massive stage fright about doing his patter song. So he enters the white room, which is like a theater term when you're like scared. And then you just 
say and do things that you don't remember and can't control right and he basically freaks everyone out and they're all like what were you doing what were you thinking and it just was like I think a very specific theater term or something people know that kind of went over my head and it happened multiple episodes I was kind of over it yeah I I agree I also didn't love the white room episode and when it was referenced yeah it felt like too niche or maybe just they didn't explain it enough or they spent too much time on it it just yeah. dragged it, it dragged I, I also didn't love that and we talked about joy joy was a bit unhinged a little eccentric um, eccentric's a good word um she loved her fishes and she, she her and Charles should just have not been together that was a very bad strange match. relationship bad match and even though I like Oliver and Loretta, the date episode when everyone has their dates. And yeah, that was strange. Oliver goes over to Loretta's for a meal. She's cooking, but is struggling to cook and makes a really tough piece of steak. And Oliver loses his tooth while eating the piece of meat. How hard it was that steak? <laughs> How is that possible? Let's I was just like... That's I really was like, no way. And he's so calm about it and then just spends the rest of the night without a tooth. I was like, how unrealistic is this? Yeah, and that was so insane. you lose a tooth while eating, you are immediately calling your dentist. Come on. No. And I would be mad. Like, that's how yeah. in love he was. He did not get mad at her. He was so he was in just love. like, ha ha ha. <laughs> Crazy. Because if you didn't, like, if you were not in love with that person, then it's a chop immediately. It's Bye-bye. an immediate chop. Okay, Shelby, who in this season of Only Murders in the Building, who or what did you love to hate? I have to say our podcasting trio, Oliver, Mm. Charles, and Mabel, they had their moments. Like, I'd say, I think I like Oliver the most this season. Yeah, I agree. And so he's leaning more on the love side, but Mabel, I'm just, I don't think she had much going on this season. And yeah. it felt weird how she was with Tobert and then with Charles being with Joy. I'm like, you guys don't really seem invested in these relationships. Like, why are you doing it? I agree. Like, just cut I, these yeah. people loose. Yeah. I agree. The trio this season, they also had some fighting. I just yeah. felt like, yeah, Charles and Mabel were kind of lost. I think Oliver had the best art because he finally did yes, a play, um, a successful musical, and he found this love. Felt more like Oliver's season. Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. We talked about Dicky. Um, he was. I feel like he was kind of like the straight man. Like he, you know, he just seemed off the whole time. Very odd, very weird. That's why, honestly, I have him yeah. in this category. Kind of insecure. Yeah, yeah, it was just he really was fishy. He was definitely the one. I was like. He could have killed his brother the way he's acting. Yeah, he was, it was giving sus. Was giving um, sus. And also Loretta was giving sus. Like, obviously now <laughs> we know she was so trying to protect sus. Dickie. Like, now she we was know doing why, but she yeah. was doing a lot. The way she was speaking to Ben, I was like, ooh. I know, and she was very awkward. Yeah, it was fishy. Of course, Ben Glenroy, uh, Paul Rudd. He's an interesting character because we see that even though he's this famous actor, he had issues. Like the fact that he was kind of insecure and needed to eat that cookie did him in. The fact yeah. that we learned he was talking to him, his the cookie in his that dressing was room. That was great. That was one of my favorite moments. Wow. Because I was not expecting that at all. No. Um, that was good. I think Mabel figured that out. Yeah. She was like, wait, it's not who he was talking to it was what because you were like in the video that Tobert had of him like talking in his room it like there was no one responding so I was like was someone just like standing there like that didn't make sense right so that was really that that was was a good twist he was talking to the cookie um that's a good segue because we hate to hate cookies this season (laughs) (laughs) because that was used as a murder weapon crazy you never would have thought don't trust every cookie you get Be no careful. if a cookie's just sitting on your desk don't don't eat it, eat it. <laughs> do not eat it 
good segue Donna and Cliff they're definitely in our hate to hate this time because it was hard to have sympathy for them right like when the son was like oh my gosh I'm gonna jump onto the stage I'm gonna fall into I was like obviously I don't want him to do that but I was just I don't feel bad for you yikes savage I think they had rich people problems yes like Donna decided to poison someone so her son could have a good first produced play like really i know you wanted to murder someone to make sure your son's play was a success and that then he wanted insane. to he did it accidentally but he got mad he was gonna turn on his mom for poison it just is like yeah it was yeah. to your point hard to feel sympathetic with some of the issues they were dealing with a little out of touch but also yeah. they were barely in the beginning of the season like I'm kind of mm-hmm. curious to rewatch like were there signs like we're kind of on the outside of things so it was, I think it could be hard to root for them because we barely saw them or got to know them you know right totally so for love to love we have Howard and detective adams howard definitely had more you know storyline this season yes i feel like he's just kind of been a background character right so Mm -hmm. oliver's assistant he you know was an integral part of the plot so i was happy that he finally got you know some love about time yes and for me detective adams she really just had a cameo this season in a sits probe episode I guess, letting some other detectives handle this murder. But when Mabel, Charles, and Oliver involved, she knew she had to come back and focus and get plugged in. So it was great to see her cameo and her love of theater. She knew what a patter song was and was excited to hear Charles sing one. (laughs) Yes, she's always great. Love Detective Adams. Okay, Shelby. Red flag, green flag, one, two, three. Is it a red flag to live in your relative's apartment rent-free without a job? Oof. So basically, Mabel. I think it's a red flag for how Mabel's doing it because it doesn't seem like Mabel knows what she's doing. It doesn't seem like she kind of has like... A direction. A a direction, a goal, a path. If she was creating art, which I think she was doing a few seasons ago, or if she was doing something maybe like okay but she's kind of just chilling and there's nothing wrong with chilling but it did seem weird to me that she was kind of just doing nothing in the apartment right yeah and like you know she's 30 but she doesn't have a job right it's like we got to be working towards something like what is Mabel working towards right that's my only thing like I think it's fine hey lucky you if you have a relative's apartment you can stay in yeah more power to you but have something going on Okay. Is it a green flag to admit to a crime to protect a loved one, aka Donna and Loretta? No, it's not a green flag. Obviously, you know, we are not mothers, so I can never understand. So I feel like the moms might be like, yes, like I'm going to do whatever it takes for my child. I'd rather be there and not them. Right. But like, I mean, you're going to go to jail, like you're murder. That is so serious. So no, it is not a green flag. You know, don't put yourself in a position where you're going to be in jail over someone else. That's not your responsibility. But you know, if that's your kid, I have no idea. Maybe it is a green flag. So sound off. Let us know what you think. So I definitely am not a parent. So don't know what it is to relate. But I do think it's admirable to try and protect someone and show that you love them. Just probably not the best way to like teach your child a lesson and have them be accountable you know yeah so I agree I don't think it's a green flag but I can I think the idea could be green like yes you're trying to love and take care of them right definitely okay is only burners in the building season three a wait or a watch I think it's a watch if you watch the last three episodes but If you're watching the whole season, it's a wait. Yeah. It had a lot of middling moments. So it was a bit disappointing, but it ended on a high note for me. So overall, I'm like, okay, if you're watching a few episodes, 
it's good but the whole thing eh. yeah I agree compared to other seasons I'm saying it's a wait I, I didn't love it as much I think um there were only a couple episodes in there that I really enjoyed the rest of the season I thought was pretty boring and I guessed it was the sun I, I think I guess it was the producers I was like these two did it like I had a feeling probably halfway through the season and the other seasons I had no idea so this season I thought was more predictable I thought it was really niche with all the theater references. Yeah, not nearly as good as the other two seasons. Okay, Shelby, what on to our what to watch segment? What are we looking forward to in relation to Only Murders? Yes, well, it got renewed for season four. Season That's four. exciting to look forward to. I know a lot of people are clearly watching it, so I really am ready. For what's next and what's cool is season three ended with another murder so it's already set the stage yes another cliffhanger mm-hmm. jane lynch uh charles's stunt devil <laughs> who is so funny i'm sad that she was the one who got murdered by some it seems like someone's targeting charles so that's what's crazy because Jane Lynch goes to Charles's apartment to get more wine for their celebration party of the first night of the musical and gets shot in Charles's apartment. So clearly, Charles is the target. And because Jane's the stunt double, looks a lot like Looks him. too much like him. Way who who do we think is targeting Charles? Is it someone we've met already? I feel like it could be Joy the Mm. ex-girlfriend i just feel like charles and his taste in women something's going on (laughs) it could be joy i feel like joy would be so obvious i know probably not her because remember he said he just got a text from joy or something right in the finale yeah that's who they want us to think right maybe it's the the stalker ben stalker i'm telling you i think it's weird that he's lit out of prison and we don't know who he is it could be him but why would he want to kill charles like that doesn't yeah. make any sense to so me it could be someone we don't know or we met very briefly like yeah sort of how the producers were the ones this season and the season before it was cinda canning's assistant like people who you kind of see casually and you don't really right. like think and it's like oh right. they're the killer or it exactly. could be someone completely new I guess we'll find out, but I love it. New season, new mystery to unfold. Yeah, I, I think this will be an interesting one. I did think that Ben Glenroy, I was like, oh, like I'm so excited. Paul Rudd, like collapse on stage. But I think the pacing was off this season. But hopefully I'm intrigued because we'll see more of Jane Lynch's character, hopefully, because yes. she was barely in this season. Yes. Um, and she's so funny on the show. So yeah, hopefully season four will be better. As we talked about in season three, I didn't love. Wasn't the it best. It was a wait for me. But hopefully season four brings back what I love. I about hope. It. And I don't know if you heard this in the finale, but they multiple characters mentioned LA as possible places that they might go. Tobert oh. invited Mabel to come with him to LA. That is true. <laughs> and then Loretta got job offers to film things in LA and um charles is like oh well la might be the place for a little so it seems oh. like oliver might go with loretta to la mabel LA might go season. with Robert to la multiple times they're like yeah we can handle la in small doses classic eh. new yorkers <laughs> classic but it wouldn't be only murders in the building i know uh, if they moved to la so who knows but they were dropping little hints so a lot exactly. to come but i'm excited Yes. Anything else that we're watching? I mean, if you like true crime podcasts, you gotta tune in and get your fix while we're waiting for the next season of this. I know we both aren't really into true crime. But Not really. No. There's a podcast called Sisters Who Kill that follows Black women murderesses. I actually met them at the podcast movement conference I went to. And then did a like Spotify for podcaster session. So it was cool that we know them and they're really sharing their insights. So if you're looking for new podcasts on true crime, check out Sisters Who Kill. That's it. Maybe not us because we don't love true crime, but if you do, check them out. Yes. 
Yes. Well, thank you all so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave us five stars on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It makes a big difference and it would mean a lot to us. And follow us on all social media channels at Sisters yes. Watch, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, X. Twitter. Yes, all of the social media platforms were there. Check us out at Sisters Who Watch. And we want to hear from y'all. Let us know what we should watch next. You can DM us on social media or email us, sisters who watch at gmail.com. We really want to have sisters connection with y'all. So let us know what you think. Yes. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Stay Everything. watching.